The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can build a complete picture of your client's financial wealth. With NetWealth, you can track and monitor external bank accounts alongside residential and investment properties. Join the dots with Zeppo, a client data warehouse that connects your CRM and other tech systems with NetWealth. Discover a world of client data at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. By advisor request, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform in partnership with NetWealth. It's your go-to source for everything advice tech related, from research to demos, case studies and insights. To learn how your peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking a clean, simple and privacy-first approach to file notes with Stuart Riddle, Managing Director at Connect Digital, the creators of Claris AI. Claris is an AI-powered tool that turns your raw meeting transcripts into compliant file notes and is the first tool I've come across that actively redacts the personally identifiable information of clients and all data is securely hosted in Australia. I really love the client experience focus that Claris has and Stuart takes us through the soon-to-be-released Client Insights tool as well as how Claris differentiates itself from other generic AI note-taking tools. I started by asking Stuart what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. The oldest piece of tech I own would have to be from the 70s. Right. And it was, it was probably cutting edge back then. But it's a, an auto return turntable. So I'm into vinyl and, you know, having a, having an auto return turntable back then must have been pretty awesome. So, yeah, with my vintage hi-fi gear, that's probably where it all starts. Late 70s, I'd say. Late 70s, but that's... um. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Like, I'm actually not sure what the significance of that is in terms of the auto-return part of it. So you get a record, you put it on the turntable, and normally at the end, if you get a full manual turntable, the record plays, and you just get this, like, at the end where it's sitting in the middle of the kind of of the record where the needle sits in the middle. But this tech... Makes it makes the needle come back to where it, you know, back to the kind of its starting position. So nice. you're then good to go to fire up the next record. Yeah. Very cool. No, I'm not sure if you ever listen to a full album the whole way through, but um, that's the that's the vinyl experience. It's, yeah, I think it's pretty rare these days. Yeah, I guess that's how music used to be listened to, just the whole way through. And yeah, the sort of definitely a micro efficiency there, and um, that's awesome. And I guess sort of moving into, yeah, this this decade or last couple of years and, and more micro efficiencies, are there maybe one or two ways you're using AI either personally or in your work life? The probably the biggest kind of revolution in terms of how I've used AI is uh, at church and uh, I run some youth focus sessions, you know, where you're kind of storytelling to kids, either sort of teenagers or, um, you know, young adults and I, I always struggle, like in presentations, trying to get the right imagery, you know, just to support the support the narrative. And all the all the images online were get copyrighted or you know pretty old. So it's been awesome just to use tools like Big Journey to generate and have complete freedom and creativity to generate images. So in terms of you know supporting storytelling, for example, generative AI is incredible and. Um, yeah, the freedom and flexibility that you can use or generate with that uh, is is insane. Whether it's business context or the sort of stuff I'm doing, yeah, it's revolutionary. Very cool. No, and I, I love that example. That's uh, a bit different in terms of 
normally heavily focused on work, but that's a great sort of personal or extracurricular example. I guess, yeah, sort of moving into the um, the meat and potatoes of today. So obviously, um, Claris is today's focus, but I'd love to start with your origin story, Stuart, and I guess the, the work that you're doing at Connect Digital. And yeah, how did it all start? And basically, yeah, Connect Digital, and then we'll talk about how sort of Claris came to be and, and the problems that you're solving. Yeah, it's all, like I'm one of those guys who is, uh, who is, I think, had six or seven career changes across you know across my career, and it started in mechanical engineering, believe it or not. And I did a year at uni that focused on mechanical engineering, and that's how long it lasted. And then, sort of, the next step was shifting across into building design, and because I kind of wanted something a little more creative, and did a course in building design, and then. From there, pivoted into 3D computer imagery. From there, a client wanted some kind of marketing website, this new kind of tech that they heard about, you know, that everyone was into. And I offered to do that and taught myself web design. So as a result of that, I ran my own agency for uh, five or six years and then got into advertising agency space where I grew digital strategy, the digital strategy department and was responsible for digital marketing and um, and running digital teams in those agencies. So from from that, I became really interested and more focused on product development. In other words, you know, SaaS products, products that people subscribe to to help them solve problems and try and get rid of their headaches, whether that's from a kind of sales perspective or process improvement or what have you. So that's that, that's where my kind of tech uh, experience and background kind of collided and um, I became really interested in how to build and market products, digital products. And as a result of that, Connor and I, my business partner, uh, decided to form Connect Digital, which is essentially a product studio that has been born out of a software development company. And we just would prefer to build products that people love using than do any sort of client projects. And as a result of that, we um, yeah we started to get into the financial services space and um, Claris was, was born out of that. And it was actually born out of a client project uh, where we built a, a digital workflow solution that connected advisors with licensees and power planners um, and just solve that kind of bottleneck and the the efficiencies and the transparency around that process and started hearing this kind of horror story about file notes from many different advisors and it's like can you guys solve this and we're sort of kind of not reluctantly but i think when you hear a problem enough times you realize that it's a big enough problem to solve so um that's kind of where i came from in terms of connect digital and then that's how Claris evolved from that. So, yeah, Claris.ai was the result of a um, couple of client projects and a whole bunch of um, complaints from advisors who seem to have the same problem. Yeah, that's a great overview. Thank you for sharing that. And I love how, yeah, the product ended up, I guess, being not the original problem or issue you're going to solve, or at least what you've commercialized um, in the end. It's really cool. And I've, um, had a bit of a play around. I've watched uh, a webinar, which will link in the sort of new dedicated ensemble advice tech space. It's really clean. It's not, I'm not going to say simple, but it just has that you know what you need to do. It's really clear what it does and what it doesn't. Do you mind sort of yeah telling the telling our listeners like what does it actually do and maybe what the sort of process looks like um, sort of in reality, like a couple of practical examples. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the good feedback. Good to hear. Uh, first of all, first of all, too. So, uh, but essentially, it's it's really focused on on taking long raw transcripts of meetings with clients that advisors have with clients, and extracting out the relevant pieces of information to produce a good quality file note. And by good quality file note, you know, everyone's not everyone, but a lot of people have different op- opinions on what they should include and the level of details that licensees require, for example. So 
it solves the problem of taking those raw transcripts and producing file notes that meet your standards, your practice standards. And it's like we really love to talk about it in in the terms of the client experience. And what I mean by that is is the file note is kind of the the I guess the you know the tight summary of all those discussions that you have with clients. But how do you then kind of extend that one step further and go how can we use this information to give clients, your clients, the advisor of clients, really good summary and, you know, really nice type to-do list and action items as a result of those meetings. So it solves the problem for file notes, but also really helps advisors with the client experience. A great, you know, summary email back to them. Um, we've got some plans to kind of extend that experience, but that's really the problem that it solves, first and foremost, and we've tried to keep it really focused on that. No, amazing. And yeah, I really love how it's just as simple as that, like turning a raw transcript into a compliant file note. And as you sort of alluded to, every licensee uh, has a different view of what is a compliant file note. So it probably leads into talking about the sort of template um, side of things. Do you mind sort of taking us through through that? Was that always the approach when building it or did that sort of fall out of I guess the maybe the random nature of, of sort of AI output. Like, can you talk a bit more about the the template um, side of things? Yeah, it's, yeah, good good question. We so we built Claris with privacy kind of first and foremost. Like that was the that was our initial um, premise that we built it on, and the the customization and the templates weren't a part of the original build. We yeah we know that um, it's a it, it's a an industry or a sector that's really, uh, you know, it really needs good security and privacy controls in place. So with the experience that we've had with some health uh, software that we built and kind of privacy controls around that, we wanted to bring that as a foundational kind of element of Claris. So any data that you send to AI, we, we redact any private information from that and, you know, just try and contain um your client's private sensitive information within the platform. So that was the core premise that it was built on and the templates were quite sort of restrictive or it, it didn't have editable templates, but that's grown from the questions that we've had from advisors around uh, flexibility and customization. So, you know, our, our philosophy is build something that solves the, the, the headache or the problem in a, you know, in the most simple way possible and then listen to your users and the more advisors use it, the more feedback we get, the more we ask and that's how we want to grow it. That's kind of our philosophy around product development. There's no point us thinking up features and imagining what, you know, pain points there are in practices. It's about, yeah, just understanding those and trying to sort of bundle them up into useful improvements that are going to, um, you know, save people time or, or help the client experience in this case. No, great. And I, I guess you sort of mentioned there around the, you know, you're not sending clients PII or personally identifiable information. So does that include things like their names or like their email address? Like how does that sort of work in practice? Yeah, correct. We have we have some controls that pick up name, mobile phone numbers, addresses, anything that could relate that particular bit of information to someone. So we strip that out. And you'll see it as you as you sort of click the go button in Claris where it strips the PII out. It then sends it off to AI. So we're not using any any client data to train the models that sit behind Claris, the AI models. And then it unredacts that before it presents it back to you in the, in the interface. So yeah, privacy focused. And, um, we believe that's just a real point of difference that we want to try and maintain um, in any kind of future development. Yeah, and I think that's definitely a major hurdle for um, – or it's really it's holding everyone back, isn't it, in terms of using AI to its full potential. And I guess that sort of links to my next question. You've, you've really probably answered it in, in, in part with the PII functionality, but, you know, there's plenty of generic sort of AI note takers out there. Like why, why build something from scratch? Is it in addition to that privacy focus or is there sort of other elements to it too? We, we developed it because – Advisors were telling us that the other sort of off-the-shelf solutions weren't up to scratch, and there was just some what we thought were sort of fairly easy fixes for those for those pain points. So it was driven by yeah, driven by and directed by advisors, 
and just kind of listening, keeping our ears to the ground and listening to the feedback and um, you know some of the some of the frustrations they have with current solutions. So, you know, bringing that together, I guess, was the um, you know was the basis for what we did and how we how we designed it. And we just kept hearing about this kind of kind of feature, this massive features that software tends to kind of you know grow into over time or evolve into over time. And we just wanted to keep it a really sort of simple, streamlined process that didn't confuse people and added lots of value to their existing process. You know, fitted into it, but also helped them upweight things like the client experience or uh, the standard of file notes that their practice is producing. That's our, yeah, that's been our philosophy the whole way through. So, yeah, I think if we if we try and keep it simple and focused, I think we've done our job and the feedback so far seems to tell us that, you know, that we're doing the right thing there. So, yeah, keep an eye out for what's ahead. Yeah, no, very exciting. And, yeah, I, I really sort of resonate with your point there around those um, – you know, other tools, more generic tools aren't up to scratch. And I've sort of said before that it's it's almost like if you just have someone random come in from the street and start taking notes in a meeting that they've got no context for or no understanding of what they should be taking um, notes down for or, you know, what's the context, etc. And, yeah, I think out of the box as well, you're actually delivering um, a lot of those templates as well. So, I think you've got, you know, all the way from a prospect call, ad hoc calls, even fact-finding all the way through to sort of strategy advice and review meetings. So I assume that's really adds to the simple nature of it. Like you're, you're going, you're signing up for an account and straight out of the blocks you've got um, what looks to me, uh, you know, very compliant file note. And would you say that those templates sort of become like a mega prompt in terms of how you build, you know, what to actually, how to format the response, what to include in this section, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Um, for those who aren't aware of what prompts are, it's essentially the instructions that you give AI to give you a result you're looking for. And, and that's what Claris does. It gives you those mega prompts, which are guardrails to guide AI as to what kind of output you want from, in this case, the transcription that goes in at the start of the process. So, yeah, it's, it's um, the base templates give everyone a really good starting point to then go and tweak up as they need and give them the controls they need to really, you know, if it's a practice with five or ten advisors, then they can all tap into and benefit from a common set of standards or guidelines based on those templates. So, yeah, we think it's a, um, it's just a really sort of smart thing for larger practices to make use of and tap into as well. I think so. And it just gives everyone sort of great confidence that they know what the output's going to be. It's not just sort of fingers crossed and it sort of allays any of that sort of hallucination sort of qualms. And I also really like the, I believe it's the required items section in the template where uh, my understanding is that uh, you can put in there the things that you're supposed to cover off on, like at a, you know, they're required as the name suggests, but it will actually alert you or draw attention to it if they're not covered in the meeting. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it, it's really helping practices be sort of preemptive or, uh, you know, getting in front of, missing items that Sunday may need to call the client up on or, or follow up on. And if they're required in your templates, but they're not being covered and haven't been covered in the transcripts, um, in other words, discussed in the meeting, then yeah, just just a nice prompt to be able to go, well, hang on, you asked for the FSG, but um, you didn't send it or what, what have you, you know, whatever that sort of instance is, for example, is, and give you a heads up on how to, you know, how to, um, but potentially what to discuss with a client next time you see them. No, amazing. And that's a, I, I'm just thinking now it'd be a great way to sort of pre-vet um, your advice. So in terms of if you're going to an SOA stage and the file note is saying you haven't done these seven things, well, you can quickly address those things maybe in another recorded call before it goes to the advice stage or whatever stage you're at and avoid that sort of back and forth internally when it comes to yeah. the compliance team. That can add sort of weeks um, to that process and yeah, it doesn't obviously translate to a very uh, incredible client experience. Um, I guess on the sort of client experience side from the, obviously you being the product owner and advisors or practices being the clients, what, what are some of the benefits or efficiencies practices are experiencing as a result of using Claris? I'll relay a couple of stories that we've had, you know, some advice feedback and, uh, 
follow-up calls that we've had with advisors. Like one of the most recent ones was, was it was really good to hear actually. It's like this advisor is telling us about their usual kind of end of financial year experience, right, where it's just piled up with admin and paperwork and all this stuff to finish off before they close out the year. And they said, because of Claris, it's the first time they've got to June 3rd and just gone like, it's under control. And like, I've done all my file notes and they're all in, they're up to date and it's sorted. And like, that was awesome to hear. It's like the, the headache's gone. So just that kind of story really kind of keeps us going and um, it's great to hear. And knowing that they can then go and spend some time on a new marketing channel or exploring a new bit of business development or CBD, whatever they need to do that kind of, you know, they don't have time for otherwise. So that that kind of example, I think, really highlights the just the, the, the stress that it takes out of advisors' lives and having, you know, less admin in their lives. So so that's a that's a recent example. Um but just, you know, doing more with less. It's like if you're if you're a solo um, advisor and you're working on your own, like take that whole burden of admin kind of out of your week or at least minimize it and it allows you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. So I think that's a big one. The the other one is the client experience and just having you know, faster turnaround time on things. Uh, I've literally had advisors show me on a call their email from a client that said, hey, appreciate the quick follow-up and like the, the great, clear kind of action, list of action items. So having having that kind of feedback, I think, really highlights that we're on the right track. And if we can underpin everything we do to help advisors deliver a better client experience, um, hopefully we'll keep hearing some of those stories you know, down the track, but um, yeah, that that has been a big benefit for advisors. The other one has just been consistency. You know, just high quality file notes. Uh, they uh, practice managers know they can review quickly. You know, eyeball what's missing. Coach their staff on how to improve those. But the templates certainly lift the standard of file notes and help them control the output and the flexibil- flexibility in doing that and. And tweaking the client emails, for example, just saves them a lot of time. Like we're hearing stories of kind of anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours. So getting that back and on your desk ready to action in less than five minutes with Claris kind of seems to be ticking the boxes. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I, I love how there's the sort of the end client at the end of that too, where you know, all too often you've got this massive file note, which is in the sort of advisor or compliance language and then you've got to put that into the, you know, more client friendly recap, whether that's an email yeah. or whatever sort of tool you're using. But to sort of learn that their, you know, clients are actually reading the, the recap and obviously the action items are, are clearly laid out too. I might have actually brushed over that, but you've also got that sort of email drafting functionality too. Is that right? Do you mind sort of taking us through that? Yeah. As a, as an output, the two outputs that Clar- Clarissa currently gives advisors. So the first one is, a file note, which is all formatted, ready to copy and paste into XPlan or, or you know, whichever platform you use. Uh, the second output is a is a client summary, so it, it gives you a essentially a recap or a or a tight, tighter summary of what you've covered in the meeting, and it allows you to then tweak that. So you might want to make it shorter if you've got a client who just loves the top line, you know, TLDR version of that file note. You can just keep stripping it back and you can just say, make it shorter, make it super short, or, you know, just give me five five bullet points and Claris will then generate a really tight email summary to send back to the client. And from there, you copy it, paste it into Outlook and edit it to make it your own, or you can continue to refine it and really um, give you, it, yeah, it's got the controls to make it your own and uh, particularly around, you know, the way that different clients like to be communicated with. It gives you some some controls to either increase the detail, decrease the detail, or give it a completely different tone. Um, so yeah, it's a really neat um, feature that we've that we've added fairly recently, and it's getting good feedback. Um, and seems to yeah seems to kind of save at least ten or 15, 20 minutes per file note, which is awesome. Yeah, perfect. And yeah, you're covering off on both the backstage and the front stage experience there, which is really cool. I guess sort of moving forward, Stuart, like have you got anything 
um, that's on the roadmap that you'd like to share with us or just in general, what's got you excited about the future of Claris? I think the I think the client experience focus is the thing that gets us pretty excited and that's not just because that's the sort of stuff we like to build and deliver, but that's what we're hearing. That's what we're that's what we're having advisors tell us is giving them the most value. Um, because you know you might have, you know, we all know there's a shortage of advisors out there in Australia, and if there's new staff coming through a practice, we our our vision is to have Claris be the kind of um, the, the client insights that. A new starter or someone who's just come onto an account or a, you know, someone who's joined the practice can very quickly get up to speed on that client without reading through you know 65 file notes over the last 10 years of, of a client's um, of a client's lifespan with the, with the practice so with um, actually this week we're building a client insights section into Claris where you can jump into Patrick Gardner's client file or client page. And you've got all their file notes there, but you can then see or get a very tight summary of the history with Patrick and then, you know, be able to review that before you go into a meeting just as a refresher. Um, and very shortly, we'll have the ability to be able to ask questions of Claris based on the file note information that's in there, which I think kind of to the point of that client experience, if you can then, you know, ask Claris what Patrick's pets are, or, you know, what the, what the name of his pets are, then you've got a talking point for you know, what What was Patrick most interested in over the last five meetings we've had and just have those kind of insights that um, that you can then, uh, it just gives you a head start on meetings and gives you some intelligence that you might not otherwise have access to. So that's where we're going with it. We like to, you know, sort of wrap up the client experience or give advisors better tools to help them with the client experience. And alongside that, I think it's just helping smaller practices grow, you know, giving them other ways to free up their time to then focus on serving more clients um, and getting rid of the headaches that kind of come from admin around those clients. So, yeah, a few ideas in that space. Um, but, you know, on the on the near near horizon is the client insights tool that we're, that we're working on as we speak. So, yeah, watch this space for that one. Yeah. No, that's that's really compelling and, and sounds like that's sort of – that's CRM territory. Like that – there's a real blend now in terms of sort of AI note taking and and tools of that nature where you're really doing the heavy lifting of CRMs, especially from the, the client insights. And you're also like you're giving advisors superpowers and you're actually without, you know, indirectly just extracting all that information from their head. So they're not just this, you know, if they're doing a handover, for example, to another advisor, I assume that would cut down uh, the time massively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we spend a bit of time looking at some of those modern CRMs that may not be advisor focused, but certainly, uh, you know, other part of the latest crop of CRMs that are coming out, and they're all very focused on, you know, when your last interaction was, what's the quality of those interactions, um, you know, what are the what are the insights that you need to know about when you when your next contact is client, generating follow up emails automatically, that kind of stuff. You know, that's the thing I think that can really supercharge that client experience for advisors who are. You are stretched for time, and sometimes you just don't know what to write. You just need something as a as a prompt or a um, you know something to, to to kick off the email. So but yeah, probably probably getting into the CRM space, and um, we've had requests to do simple to do kind of tracking, you know, action item tracking sort of capabilities, and that may be something we look at. But uh, again, it's going to be driven by advisor demand and. Our sort of philosophy around that is if we hear one or two advisors ask for it, that's nice, you know, noted. But um, if you get 10 or 15 or 20 or, you know, big practices asking for it, then uh, we'll, you know, we'll jump in and look at it and start to start to build it or explore it at least. So, yeah, that's the kind of things that we're, that we're playing with. Love it. Um, and you're just sort of on the sort of CRM, I would sort of moving into that territory. Have you got any... Anything to say about like integrations that are either on the roadmap or that you're thinking about? Is that where you want to take it as well to slot into that sort of advice process or stack? Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've started a conversation with Xplan uh, around how we might get both some client information out and also push file notes back in. The marketplace 
sort of approach interests us where we, we might plug into various tools and have a, you know, have Claris as an option in those tools, whether it's a, um, whether it's a sort of tracking application like Asana or Trello or something like that. But yeah, we've got some, some ideas around integration, but, um, you know, the, I guess the effort involved in doing that versus the value that it offers is always what we come back to. And it's, if there's bigger headaches or bigger problems that need solving before those things, then, you know, creating a new client in Claris and copying a file note out as compared to pushing a button probably isn't, is going to save you 10 or 15 seconds rather than half an hour for a file note. So, uh, yeah, we like to kind of bucket things in, in value versus, you know, the time to deliver. So we have, but I think they'll probably slide down the, down the kind of priority list based on how much time they save advisors. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I think I'm just reflecting on a previous episode with Taylor Binden from Moas who had a sort of similar view that it's just the clarity of knowing that you're not dealing with all these APIs or other providers and you can focus on your own product and just build great things and it should actually work and stand on its own two feet is probably yeah. really refreshing, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. sometimes less is more. You know, sometimes it's, it's you know, to your point initially about how clean Claris is, like if we can... If we can simplify rather than complicate things for advisors and there's less tools rather than more and it's, you, people just get it. You, know, you log in and you get it. There's a couple of buttons there to do what they need to do and there's some extra features there for those who are ready for them or who want to use them or, or see value in them. Uh, then that's, that's our, our strategy with it. And if there's some really easy ways to integrate with tools that make that process easier or you know, prevent human error, like typos for client names, for example, or what have you. Then I think it'll make sense. But uh, yeah, we'll try and we'll try and keep it simple and keep it focused and provide more value rather than more features. Perfect. I guess yeah. What's the best way to to learn more or get started with Claris, Stuart? Yeah, jump onto Claris.ai or to and you can sign up for a free trial there. We give advisors three file notes as a trial. And then you can make a decision if you love it. Love to have you on board. Or you can hit me up on LinkedIn and happy to take you through the platform and answer any questions. Um, I'm on Ensemble, so you can ping me on that as well. And uh, yeah, love to hear from you. But yeah, the, the website's the first quarter call. Perfect. Stuart, really enjoyed the discussion today. And thank you so much for your time. Likewise, Patrick. Great, great chatting.